Oh, uh, who's is someone using the dishwasher? Tell mum, tell mummy that no one can use the sink or the dishwasher for a while. Fortunately, I was able to get our joists all in the back of the camper van. 4.8 metre lengths sliding just nicely under the front cab uh, seat so I can get them right into the front. And I think that means we've got everything we need here. I'll give you a quick rundown of what the plan is and then we'll get stuck in. Now, as I've mentioned in previous videos, the idea is to bring this floor level in here up to about 500 mil. Then it's within one step of the kitchen side door and the back door of the house rather than this kind of coming down all the steps at the back and then up one into here. and It's just going to make a not much nicer flow, especially because we're going to have a, a new cloakroom WC in here. So we want it to be accessible. That said, we've got nothing to support them on. We've got a solid wall that side, so we can put ourselves a, a nice strong ledger board onto that wall. Now over this side, I need to come up the same amount. Uh, I could do some block work or brick work. But as I'm working with timber, and I'm much more comfortable doing it in timber, I'm just gonna build using pressure treated 150 mil joist material, so six inch uh, stud work, up to the same height, and then our joist will sit onto that. Uh, so that's what we're gonna make a start on. It's about 4.6 meters across here, so I've got a couple of 4.8 meter lengths. Cut it in, I'm hoping that we can make, make it as a frame. I'm not sure I can lay it down, because it's a bit of a mess in here. But I'll try and find the flattest area and we'll make it up on the floor rather than having to do it in situ. Now you might be able to make out here, this is where I took out the old solid wall. Used to be a stone wall running along here and it was just falling down. So uh, about a year after we moved in I took out the whole of that wall and temporarily have propped the roof since then. This is so ropey and uh, bumpy that it just doesn't make sense to dig it all out and um, flatten it out for our stud work. So I'm just going to move it onto the garage slab this side which is solid, it's about five, six inches thick and um, it's plenty strong enough. It's also really nice and level across there. It's probably overkill using this size timber, but I think I'd rather just do the whole lot in the same dimensions. Uh, and also it means that our, our joists are going to bear onto this by 100mm, which is I think much better than just sitting on by 50mm or so. Um, right, we're going to get 400mm centres, again, or probably more than we need to. wall only needs to be 400 high. 400 plus the 150 joist takes us to 550 and then plus our plywood will take us to 570 and then whatever finished floor. So 400 mil total. Let's just triple check that. Dad was kind enough to drop over a load of uh, off cuts. I think these are just where he left his raft as long. Let's see if we can knock up a little stop block. Check what happened with that. We're going for three pounds. Quite heavy. Lift the wall up. Oh, that's 
have to lift like that. Swing it. Oh, it's going to be tight and it's going to be heavy. I reckon I can do it. It's going to be easier in the long run. I hadn't really thought about it, but Dad's joists are going to be six months older than mine and they've actually shrunk quite a bit. They're about a millimetre in on each side, but well, they could just be a different batch. But the treated stuff does tend to shrink. Now I need to put it on some DPM um, and I've got this left over from our trampoline project. It's a bit wide but that should be fine, I'll just carry it on under the subfloor. And there is actually a DPM under the whole of that slab anyway. Just belts and braces here. That is our wall. And once that's fixed down, once it's tied in, it's going to be really solid. Uh, let's level it up, see how we're doing. Bang on. Very, very good. I think the people who built this garage did a pretty good job. Well, that's in nice and solid. I think they're adequate. I mean, I've got all sorts of other options, like these giant, whatever they call them, thunderbolts. Um, but I think it would just be overkill. Like I say, we're not trying to, we don't need it for strength. We just need it to stop it shifting, really, for the time being. So once these are moved, I'll put a couple more fixings in on the other side. But it really isn't going anywhere. And by the time it's tied into the other wall with the joist, happy days. I've also tried to square it up with the other wall but there's so much going on over there, it's pretty hard to do. It's as square as it can be to the concrete wall this side, and it's just shy of three meters. The joists are three meters, but probably a little bit over. So I'll probably let them run long and then just um, cut them to length. So we've got a nice flush finish on this end and we're sat perfectly uh, okay on the board the other side. Right, next up, another little wall to throw up. Same height as this, and it's going to go along the wall there. A little bit different over this side. This floor is a fraction, because it's a different slab, a fraction lower than the other one, but not enough to make our wall any different, I don't think. Um, so it's going to be far easier to just put a bed of mortar down underneath our DPC on this one and then we can just tap it down until it's nice and level uh, and we'll just leave it for a few days and then we know we've got it, everything plumb. I haven't got a laser level or anything like that but I can work my way around and then we can carry on the ledger the same height as this.
I'm getting used to it, it's a different way of working and it's a lot heavier than an impact driver and of course you can do all of this with screws but actually I mean the reason why I invested in it now is just because I know how much more roofing I've got to do timber frame extensions, the full roof of the house potentially you know, self build in the future or something that might include timber framing so I know I'm going to get my money's worth out of it but actually this job didn't warrant getting it on, on its own so um, it's a bit of a luxury. Check this for size. Right, time to swing a hammer a bit. I've marked out where all our joists need to go across and what I'm going to do is fix the hangers onto this first. I think that makes sense. I've not done it before, but I think I've seen it done before. And that way, when we attach the board to the wall, we won't have to worry about where we put our bolts because we know we can put them anywhere in between. If we bolt it up, I can just see me ending up with bolts exactly where our joists are going and it just not being particularly clever. So I'm going to put them all on here, get them all ready, and then lift it up and put it on as one. So all I really care about here is making sure that the top of our joists are flush with the top of this board rather than the bottom. Although it should be flush both I guess. Right, kids were having a nap, so took advantage of needing to be quiet and went out and got some last minute supplies. Um, I've got a load of hangers, which we're going to hang the joists on that end, and then some more soil pipe fittings. These are getting costly. Um, there's quite a bit to do, and I want to get all that first fix done today or tomorrow. Right, now it's definitely time to take the door out, because as soon as I put this board across here, we're never going to be able to open it because we need to open the door to get to the screws. That's relatively straightforward. I think it will clean up fine. I'm gonna use this door on the side of the garage. we just gotta hope it doesn't rain now. I'll just bang up some plastic in a minute. Uh, just in case, but it'd be great to just be able to get to both sides of this whilst I'm fixing it. If I can get away with threading it behind that waste pipe coming out of the kitchen, that'd be good. I mean, there's quite a bit of give there. How am I going to do that? I'm not, am I? Sort that out later. Sometimes it's just easier to cut it and get going rather than mess around. So although this cladding is probably nicer to look at than just some breather felt for the next few weeks, um, I think it's just going to be easier if I take this wall down and just build a little uh, wall underneath the hangers, that, that ledger board and then I know I've got a solid foundation to go up on and I'll probably put some brickwork down there before we start. Well there's the benefit of screws. So I've rested a joist on here, propped up our hangers over this side and although we haven't got a laser level I'm just kind of, that's how I'm working so we're good across the room and we're good across from joist to the top of the ledger. Uh, nice and level there. Good way to uh, crack on in the afternoon. Hmm. Now I'm happy that it's level. Um, we need to look at, I've temporarily fixed it with a little concrete screw. 
we need to get it into the wall properly. So, a few different ones, uh, the concrete bolts, that big one, Thunderbolt. Uh, you can use those, but with this stone wall I can't tell if I'm hitting stone or mortar because it's rendered. And they're not as good, I found, in this soft stone. Uh, likewise, the concrete screws wouldn't obviously be strong enough. So I've got some normal expanding bolts, you know, the sleeve ones, the roll bolt type ones. Um, now they work pretty well in this stone work from experience. Failing that, then we can look at resin type fixing as well. But the resin ones, I believe I can do once the timber's on there, drill through with the threaded rod. So we can see how well these work, uh, and if not, we can come back in and try the resin. trying to be careful about is if I'm hitting a mortar joint it's just no good so I'm, that's why I'm trying again but otherwise if possible I'll go alternate like up down up down so we can we're not tweaking the board in or out with these it's best to really get all the dust out and if you haven't got a compressor and vacuum really doesn't work that well just you really need to just back it out in and out until you've got all the loose stuff out Ah, oh, somebody turned the kitchen tap on. Uh, Eden, is that you? Did you open the kitchen? Did you use the kitchen tap? Oh, I need a bucket or something. Brickies, you should be looking away right now because this is criminal, what I'm doing. Not my forte. I'm blaming the old bricks that I've reclaimed. Anyway, all I'm going to do is two courses on the bottom. That just gives us something to render to, or at least a, more of a weatherproof finish um, at the bottom of the wall that's going to be here. In the long term, there's going to be a room the other side of here, or a conservatory or something like that. So it isn't vital, it's just to neaten off the edge of the slab, really. Up, Impact drivers are not always the answer. It'll be a quick look round at what we've achieved and then we'll pick it up tomorrow or the next day actually. Tomorrow I'm on kid duty. So we started off with the main supporting wall over there. Just brought in all the joists just to get them out from uh, just in case it rains. Then we put the board onto the wall and it's anchored every 400 mil with these uh, sleeve anchor type bolts and that is rock solid now. Then we did this little dwarf wall, stud wall, whatever you want to call it, which is just going to help carry the stud above the floor down to the slab. And because the slab was uneven, I've just put it on a DPC and then on a little bed of, I don't know, 10, 15 mil mortar there to even it all out. And it's absolutely bang on, flat with the other one, nice and flat along here, and the edge of the end of our ledger type beam 
rests on that as well. And the very last thing is I've just bedded down this board here, uh, which will be the bottom plate of any stud work we do here. So we're pretty much ready to just drop all the joists in now, but like I said, first things first, we need to do all of our first fix plumbing. Kind of just working out how to manage that at the moment. Jason, our plumber, who's doing the boiler install, came around the other day and just really kind of gave a, a best approach um, idea for how we're going to do it. Just, I don't really want to be crawling around and under there, so if I can put everything in for utility sink, washing machine, uh, tumble dryer, um, we're going to have a toilet, basin, the condensate or condensation pipe from the boiler, all that sort of stuff. If I can get it all in now, it's just going to be so much easier after, than after the joists are done. A few people have been asking about uh, seeing plans of what on earth I'm actually doing, which is quite a good idea because it's quite hard to uh, get to grips with unless you live here. So I will be putting out a video shortly which just some floor plans, dreamscaping really of what we might do to the house um, in the short term and the long term and then hopefully that will give you a better understanding of what's going on. So that's it for today. I hope there was something of use there to anyone tackling a similar project. We've got insulation, underfloor heating and things like that to think about soon as well. So there's plenty coming up. Make sure you subscribe for all the updates and click that bell symbol and you'll get a little notification every time we upload. But apart from that, thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.